Good morning. We're coming on the air right now with breaking news from the Supreme Court. In its final decisions of the term, the Supreme Court, in two, in two seven to two majorities, with opinions written by the Chief Justice John Roberts, has decided that the Manhattan District Attorney Cyrus Vance and Congress may both eventually get access to President Trump's financial records and tax returns, but not before new arguments in district courts, which could delay the eventual release of those documents. We're going to bring in our team right now, Terry Moran, uh, who's taken a look at these first decisions. Let's talk about Cyrus Vance first. The Manhattan District Attorney who subpoenaed President Trump's for financial records. What the court has decided sweepingly is that a president does not have absolute immunity from these kind of grand jury proceedings. Exactly. That's the headline first. A unanimous Supreme Court says no president is above the law. They have to answer a subpoena from a local prosecutor. That's a 9-0 holding, just as it was in Clinton versus Jones, Bill Clinton's court case, and Nixon uh, versus Jaworski, the Watergate case. What's different here is that the, in the opinion by Chief Justice John Roberts, he does want the lower courts to take a closer look uh, at how these subpoenas by Cyrus Vance might impact the performance of the president duty. He says the president claimed absolute immunity. President Trump said, I don't have to answer subpoenas while I'm president. The court unanimously rejected that. The cautious Justice, Chief Justice Roberts said, take another look at these subpoenas under guidelines that say, make sure they aren't interfering with the performance of the president's duties. So a big win in the abstract, but more litigation and, coming. And meantime, Congress also will have to go back if they want to subpoena the president, the president's financial firm, Mazars, for those financial records as well. That's, that's right. Once again, the court rejecting President Trump's assertion, I don't have to answer these subpoenas at all. But Chief Justice Roberts, a little tougher on the House of Representatives, on those Democratic-led committees in the House that subpoenaed the Trump financial records, saying, you know, let's make sure that since it's the House of Representatives, that separation of powers issues aren't here, that the House isn't trying to interfere, harass the president by going after his personal uh, records. The House can, if it can demonstrate a, a legislative purpose, uh, go uh, have these uh, subpoenas affirmed, but he wants them to take a closer look as well. But these are, the, let's make no mistake about it, a big defeat for President Trump's claim that he is immune while president from ordinary subpoenas by state courts or by the House of Representatives, uh, and it is without question a defeat for President Trump. No presence above the law is what the courts say. Kate Shaw, Supreme Court analyst, significantly written by the Chief Justice. Both of President Trump's appointees voted with the majority. I think that's right, George. So, you know, these, as Terry just said, the last two big cases regarding kind of whether the president is above the law were unanimous decisions. And I think we were all watching to see, you know, we thought Roberts would have the opinion, but would these be five, four opinions or would they attract a broader majority? And these seven, two reaffirmations of the principle that the president is subject to some ordinary legal process uh, are a significant statement, not as significant as unanimous, but certainly hard to, to describe these as, you know, narrow partisan decisions of just the liberal justices and John. Roberts, when you have Neil Gorsuch and Brett Kavanaugh, at least in part agreeing with the proposition that Congress and local prosecutors are entitled to inquire into the president's activities uh, and may actually eventually get these documents that they have requested. And Cecilia Vega, senior White House correspondent, as a practical matter, though, the president may get beyond the election because both these cases now going back to district courts. And that is the big headline as it relates to voters in this country, George. They went to the polls in 2016 without understanding, a full understanding uh, of President Trump's financial records. He is the only president in modern history to not release his tax returns. You'll remember that. He has said that he did not want them out there while he was under audit. And it appears, again, again as these cases have been kicked down to lower courts, that voters will he likely head to the polls again this November without having that full comprehension of what his financial uh, documents entail. Uh, but again, a big headline out of this, George, those two Supreme Court picks of President Trump's both voting against the president, uh, ruling against the president on these decisions to turn over uh, his tax documents. We are still waiting from word from the White House. I imagine we'll be getting a tweet any minute, George. The big headline, no president is above the law. No president has absolute immunity from grand jury proceedings. Two seven to two decisions from the Supreme Court of the United States in their final decisions of this term, led by Chief Justice John Roberts. <laughs> Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.